We would like to know what's your reaction to the recent killings of Nigerians by the SARS? Yes, um, it's appalling and a, a gross, gross um, abuse of our fundamental rights. You know, it's funny that those who are meant to protect us are now the one killing us. You know, that is now the irony. Before now, we thought that it was more or less like a black versus white issue uh, in, in the area of uh, Black Lives Matter. But now it has come to our doors, wherein you go out to watch football and you can be shot by uh, an unknown or a disgruntled police officer because you cannot part away with 200 naira. So lives are now so so useless to rogue police officers and security agencies that they feel uh, not accountable to anybody and they can take any life. So, and that is why we feel that uh, we need to start taking action against this impunity from these officers. So in your own opinion, what do you think, aside from the killings, what do you think constitutes police brutality and how should this be addressed? Yes, uh, police brutality is the excessive use of force in the course of policing. So on, on the normal um, arrest procedure, you should touch, if necessary, just touch, mere touching the um, suspect before you arrest and you, you tell the person you are under arrest. That is the normal arrest procedure. In fact, most times that is not necessary. And in extreme cases, you can handcuff the person. And also, before an arrest should be made, investigation should have been made. So you should have gathered your evidences. But in the normal practice, Nigerian practice, you get to see that police officers go to the streets and start extorting people or because they see you on dreadlocks or probably you have a tattoo on your body or you have some facial expressions that does not go down well with them they can arrest you for that you know it's simple it's so it's so funny that you see people being arrested for dreadlocks you know fine these issues might not be issues that were common, dreadlocks were not, might not be common in the um, 70s, in the 80s and the 90s, but you, we have to accept that generation changes and they come with their own fashion trends. So I believe that the police should naturally do not see anybody who is on dreadlock as a threat. However, they would, should have investigated the person whether or not is linked to a syndicate or a crime before you now arrest. So the, the, the excessive use of force in any format, in any form, is tantamount to uh, police brutality. So oh, what cases of, uh, what similar cases has your organization taken over, the organization handled on police brutality? Yes, um, the recent killings of um, Kola D. Johnson, our organization is the uh, legal representation providing support for the victim's family and his two-year-old child. Our organization has been known to provide a user-friendly um, legal support via social media. So majorities of these victims of social media come to our um, our Twitter handle or our organization to report cases of extortion, cases of um, brutality and things like that. So the issue of Kaladik Johnson came to our knowledge and we met with the family and we've since then been representing them in um, different administrative panel, panels and court proceedings to, to ensure justice for the family. And of recent, the, the, the orderly room trial conducted yesterday, the officers that um, perpetrated the Ineos Act were dismissed.
and they've been referred to state CID party for arraignment in Yaba Magistrate Court pending their legal advice from the DPP. So we're admonishing the government to speed up trial so that we'll know the outcome of this case. You know, people should be made to, to, to answer to their crimes. Time of impunity must be over now. People can't just, you can, you, it's not uncommon to hear police officers saying, I will shoot you and nothing will happen. So we have to make some of them example so that it sends signal down to the hierarchy and the ranks and file that policing is, is being friends with your community in order to solve a crime, not being a, a, a brute force to your community. We are not in a dictatorial um, administration. It's a democracy. And everything has to follow the laid down procedures and rules of engagement. So um, beyond Kolade Johnson, we've also represented a whole uh, order, um, Tokwe Baz. Tokwe Baz was also a victim of SARS um, brutality. He was um, arrested unjustly, detained for months without trial, and um, eventually when trial um, happened, he was uh, discharged and acquitted. However, while in SARS detention, he was um, beaten with cutlasses and he suffered various kinds of injury. We filed a fundamental right action demanding for damages for the victim and um, we believe hopefully we'll be successful. The same thing we're about to do for Colady Johnson. We just want the whole internal structure, the old administrative processes of the police to be concluded. Then we'll see how we'll take on the civil arm, which is meant to ask for recompense for the family and the victims. So after every outrage, as we just act by the police, we've seen the people coming out to demand a reform of SARS or an end to SARS. Yet, the, the, the police authority are, are yet to do anything tangible to, to call their officers into, into order. Don't you think it is time something has to be done for the police to, know, to, to, to be able to curb the activities of their officers? That is why we are taking this particular uh, issue of color the more seriously and we're using it as a as a point to demand for the passage of the police act the new police act it provides a whole new legislation even though the, some of these laws are already present in the administration of criminal justice law which holds the police accountable however we believe that if this law is some of the provisions of this law is also entrenched in the police act which has like the main const, um, law, point of law for the police um, um, organize, um, um, police authority. That is going to really help in pushing the accountability of the police officers. So when they are trained in their police schools and colleges, they already go through the police act to know the do's and don'ts. So. By the time they are, they, they are sent to the streets to combat crime, they know the proper rules of engagement. So beyond just doing a protest, beyond doing um, sporadic engagement with relevant government authorities, we believe that a lasting um, solution should be put in place, which is the law and also accountability measures. So, Strong accountability barriers should be put in place to hold uh, erring police officers accountable to the citizens. And these accountability measures should be very, very accessible, easily accessible to the citizens. So that with um, whosoever is um, abused or extorted, he can quickly, through Twitter or through Facebook or through a phone call, he could get justice for himself. Then. Beyond that, too, is the issue of training these officers in human rights and 
other relevant rights and also the prevalent practice of this generation. They have to reorient them, that people that are engaged in one practice or the other, maybe a fashion statement or maybe an, a, a, a particular activity, does not necessarily mean they are criminals. But, of course, you could investigate them. Does not also mean that you should arrest them or, in the worst case scenario that we see now, kill them. Some people are of the opinion that scrapping of SARS would increase crime in the society. Do you agree with that? Yes, um, you know, the issue of SARS or anti or they are just units of the, of the police force. The, the, the major goal I feel the society should focus on is the parent body, which is the Nigerian police force itself, not whether SARS or even if you remove SARS from the streets today and you remove anti cortism probably police officers in those units will be redeployed to another unit. So it's more or less like changing the goalpost. It's still the same police officers. So nothing would really change in the sense. It would just be the name. So what we, have, what we believe is put strong measures for accountability within the system. Train these officers pass the police uh, act, the new police bill, pass it into law. Then also, where there is need for funding, put necessary funding in place. For example, the RRS of Lagos State, nobody hears, you know, issues, you know, maybe issues of police brutality, issues of extortion. You rather hear good news about them, them helping to combat crime, helping to in cases of emergency, helping on South Milan Bridge when your vehicle breaks down. So that is what we hear about Harares in Lagos State. However, in other, which is also a unit of the police force, but in other places we hear some unspeakable stories about police force. You know, getting because you can't pay them five two hundred naira, they they they, they shoot you because you you can't even say please sir. They feel angry and they can beat you up because of that. You know, so many untold and unspeakable stories that you shouldn't hear out there that they come in. So strong accountability measures should be put in place and disciplinary measures. So looking at the side of the people now, how do you think this inhuman in act by the police is affecting the youths especially? The, the, the young people are fed up. Young people, young university graduates, young secondary school, they don't see police as your friend anymore. They rather see you in between. Someone once said to me, if you are between an armed robber and a police officer, what should you do? You know, that is a very you know, dicey question now, nowadays because you don't know who, who is the most, um, um, so to say, wicked um, soul among them. You know, some people believe that an armed robber is just there to take your money and go away. So you rather just part with your money and go away. Whereas some believe that, okay, if you go to the police officers, you don't know, God forbid, um, um, there is this balance they use, uh, um, un unlawful discharge, or I've forgotten the name they, 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 they use. Uh, accidental discharge. Accidental discharge. You know, it's a common it was an accidental discharge, sir. I was in court one day and the, 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 the police officer was telling the, the, the judge that they didn't intend to kill him. They were only trying to quell a riot and it was an accidental discharge. But the truth is that every rifle, every um, pistol has a safety mechanism in it. So how will you just unlock the safety mechanism? For you, to, for there to be an accident, start discharge. So you know, it's because you are not accountable enough. You are not afraid. You are not. You are not careful enough that a soul or a person's life have been placed in your hands, and you have a duty of care to such a community or to such persons. So I believe that an average uh, um, youth that have been engaged with have engaged with a lot is angry on the streets. And the, 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 we, we, we are the people, the CSOs and the NSAS movement are the people trying to pacify them. Don't, 
don't 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 take him to uh, to violent protest. Don't take it. You can solve this through better means. So this the words in the street and even some of these people that should be productive. You know the normal young guy who is a creative designer that probably use Photoshop to design graphics for people is now seen as a Yahoo Yahoo guy and is seen as a, a, a point of extortion. So when they see you with a laptop and they say, okay, you have Yahoo mail on your laptop, you're seen as a Yahoo guy. You know, and you know, those are very funny scenarios that you, you hear. And because there was a particular case that we had to handle, a young man was traveling from Benin to Abuja and at the stopover, they had a stop and search. During the stopover, the police were going through the passenger's phone. And at that point, a 200k alert landed on the young guy's phone. They, 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 they collected their court. They, they mandated him to transfer 100,000 naira to him, to, to them. A young guy that just did finish the job and he, he, he got the balance for the legitimate job that he did. And because you saw the alert, you believed that, ah, no, this guy must be a Yahoo boy for getting a 200,000 naira sum. So it was through the intervention of the commissioner of police in Edo that we were able to get the guys, the police officer that did the act, and also get the money back to the, to the victim. So, you know, the, the, the orientation there is just bastardized already. And a young person on the street feels that, okay, police is not your friend. And I feel they need to tell that their stories now. It's high time they need to tell their stories and and rebrand the old police force and make it more um, um, citizen friendly and more efficient than what we have as of now. Because it now is a shadow of itself, a ch total shadow of itself. The CSOs and NGOs seems not to have been not to have been doing more on police brutality of the people. What do you think is the cause of this and what can be done? to ensure that more CSOs and NGOs take up cases like this? Yes, uh, well, the, the CSOs, they, they, they have a whole lot of work they're doing, and I must tell you, they are, they are impactful. Few of them that I've worked with in the past have been very impactful. They have been the ones driving the new passage of the police bill. They've been the one also driving the NSACs behind the scenes in the NSAS and even entities, individuals also have been the one behind the NSAS movement. And these have been drawing attention, you know, the like sometimes last year when the president directed the overhauling of the of the of the police uh, unit, that was when it was through the interventions of CSOs and movements like NSAS that brought about that push. So they've been doing, but you know, sometimes when you've not achieved the desired results, the public might not see it. But a lot of work, a lot of work have gone into some of the, the few things that you see out there. You know, like our organization that are constantly been on social media monitoring um, different uh, complaints, providing legal support. Like some organizations also, NOPRIN is the network of uh, CSOs working on police um, related issues. They've been the one pushing for the passage of the police bill, like PLAC 2. They've also been the one helping the senators, drafting and engaging with senators to push for the passage of the police bill. And even when they are passed, when, this provision, when these laws are passed, they, they, they will be implemented. Oftentimes, it's until CSOs try to push that these laws should be implemented. That is when you now start seeing that some of these laws are implemented. So I believe they are doing a lot behind the scene. And very soon, the public will start to, to see more of results from the um, efforts of the CSOs. So on our final note, we discover that the police does not have a, a database of uh, cases of extrajudicial killings, activities carried out by their officers. How, don't you think this will, in a way, influence the reforming of the police? 
Yes, you know, the, the funny thing is that police naturally have not been they they don't they don't release information that that uh, will incriminate them. You know, you releasing the uh, the, the the database of uh, of people, your officers, they, they wouldn't do that. They wouldn't do that. But I know they have this data scattered across their various divisions. It's just a matter of collating them. I know some CSOs have also been working in collating some of this data. However, you know, because everybody is working disjointedly, there is no uh, one-off data, so, so to say, that you can say that this is the, 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 this is the data. The police ordinarily should have been the one in custody of that data. But even, I bet you, the police in Yaba does not interact with the police in Egbeda or Bagada. I bet you they don't synchronize that those data together. So it's difficult for even the police HQ to, to, to have a, a, a detailed information about these happenings. However, you can infer from the, from the words in the streets that um, the citizens are fed up with the activities and uh, the indiscretions of police officers. The citizens are really fed up. It's been trending for days now. The NSAS, the Reform Police, uh, Parade, Collider, Day, Johnston, Skillers, you know, things like that. From that, you'll be able to infer. Even if you ask a five-year-old on the street now, he knows what is happening about issues of police brutality. So going forward, what do you think should be done to totally end this police brutality and killings? Now, I, I believe that um, strong, like I said, strong police accountability measures should be put in place. They should, the police um, institution should work more with the CSOs. Also, they should also have strong internal disciplinary measures, strengthen the existing ones, push for the passage of the new laws, and also more funding to could also be put into the welfare of this police officer because I don't I don't expect a person that is earning relatively well will be bothered by two hundred thousand naira uh, will be bothered by two hundred naira pardon me and would have to kill because of 200, 200 naira so if the welfare is relatively better then some of these um, crimes or indiscretions that happened would reduce. Also beyond that too, is also that whenever there are crimes committed by police officers, you know that you are in for it. You know that they, it's not just transferring you from Yabad and they send you to Maduguri that will solve the issue. That you will be dismissed, you will be prosecuted, and you'll be told to pay damages. If you know all these things, you'll be afraid to just even carry your gun, you know, not to talk or shoot an unarmed civilian. Thank you very much, Mr. Nelson Alanya Pekong. Thank you.